بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا ما بعد باب من تبرك بشجرة أو حجر ونحوهما chapter من تبرك بشجرة whosoever sought blessings from a tree or hajar or stone or other than them نعم Now, just bear with me one second. Ikhwan, just restarting this, uh, this mark, inshallah. We'll be back online again soon, inshallah. Now, so we come to this chapter. The chapter, whosoever sought blessings from a tree or a stone or other than them. So other than them from the other things that the people may seek blessings from such as the qabur such as graves the graves um, such as yani, uh, caves and so on and anything from those matters from which the people seek blessings from so this is what uh, the term وَنَحْوِهِمَا is referring to other than trees and stones which people may use or seek to uh, يعني, uh, request blessings from نعم. the kalima tab tabarrak the word tabarrak is taken from the word baraka taken from the word baraka and Baraka is Kathratul Khair. Kathratul Khair. Naam. It is, or oh, this is the definition that is given by Ahlul Ilm. It is Kathratul Khair wa Thabutu wa Nima'uhu. It is يعني, abund the abundance of Khair, of good. So abundant good. Wa Thabutu. And the cementation of that khair, that good, yani to seek to cement it and to um, yani have that good that a person may, may have, have it established, yani that it doesn't leave him or her. Naam. Wanima'u, meaning and that it increases, that it increases. So this is baraka or talab al baraka. Talab al baraka, yani it is, um, it is to seek blessings with this in mind, with this definition in mind. Now, as we hear often, we hear when we say the name of Allah, when we hear the name of Allah, that very often. We hear Tabarakallah or Allahu Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Allahu Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Tabarak is on the same pattern as ta of, of Ta'ala. Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And this word in this pattern or, or yeah, under this pattern in the Arabic language then as it refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or relates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is the kathra of khair, that abundant good that comes from him in this life and in the next life. And this pattern den denotes kathra, yani abundance, and likewise uh, mubalagha, yani an intense meaning. 
And this is the same with the ulu of Allah. So that is why the ulu of Allah, the highness of Allah, is likewise under the same pattern. Ta'ala. Yani kamala. Uluwu. Yani his ulu, his highness is complete and perfect and tremendous. Likewise, the barakah that Allah Ta'ala, he blesses with. It is complete and it is abundant. <clears throat> Naam. And very often, we find these two come together. That is why you hear, tabarak, Allahu Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Very often you hear, Allahu Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And likewise in the dua of Al-Qunut, Tabarakta wa Ta'ala. Tabarakta wa Ta'ala. Naam. Tabarakta. Naam. So al baraka ikhwan, this is the meaning of al baraka and it is ala qismain. It is of two types. Baraka blessings uh, is of two types. The first is blessings as it pertains to amakin wa azmina. Amak. So this is like an introduction um, <clears throat> to this topic and because it is muhim. The very fact that it has come within this kitab, this chapter, or yeah, in this book, this chapter has come within this book, the book of Tawheed, shows to us the importance of understanding this affair of tabarruk, seeking blessings, and how it is connected, directly connected to a Tawheed. So, tabarruk or al baraka, we should say, is of two types. Baraka, which is connected to Amakin, places and uh, Azmina, certain times. So this first category, just to make it clear, is, can, is of two types in, within this first category. So the first category is places and times. That's one category together. Then the second category is blessings as it pertains to certain things within the creation and certain people tamam so dealing with the first type baraka and blessings as it pertains to places and times so from the places that are mubarak we can say that are blessed is mecca mecca blessed a blessed land it is a, a, a balad, a land that is safe and secure, and it is Mubarak. Likewise, the Kaaba and that which surrounds it, and the Masjid al Haram. Now, Al Medina, Kadalik Bayt al Maqdis in Jerusalem. These are blessed places. As for blessed times, then a blessed time, I'll leave to you guys. Ramadan, well known. Naam. Naam, the day of Arafah. What's, again, what's in Ramadan? A, single, a particular night? A Layla of Qadr, likewise. A Layla that is Mubarakah. The days of Hajj. Naam. And as it pertains to dua, likewise, Salatul Eid, the time of Salatul Eid and making dua, and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded the women to come out that it is that they may witness the dua and the barakah, the dua and the barakah. Now, likewise, uh, likewise, Al Bakur, who are Awal Nahar, the early part of the day. And in the early morning, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he made dua that Allah blesses this ummah in its morning, the early part of the day. So these are some examples of blessed places and blessed times. This is the first category. The second category is some matters from the makhluqat, from the things which are created, which are blessed. Naam. So, 
from them we have Ma'uzamzam, the water of Zamzam, the Nakhal, yani the date palms and that which comes from the date palms, dates. All of these affairs have been described as being blessed. The Shajara of Zaytun, what is that? The Zaytun, the olives. Na Naam. Likewise, the Ta'am of Suhoor. The food that a person consumes during that time of suhoor. Naam. Likewise, the Messenger of Allah, so some he said that blessings is in the nawasi of al-khayl, horses. And likewise, in, in the same hadith, uh, al-ghanam, sheep. So these are examples of some matters from the creation which are blessed other than that first category we mentioned, blessed times and places. From those that are likewise blessed, uh, some from the people. So, kul <clears throat> Muslim, every Muslim, every Muslim is blessed. Every Muslim is blessed. And as it's come in the hadith, inna min ash-shajar lama barakatuhu Muslim. Indeed, from, from the trees, from the trees, uh, that which its blessings or the, uh, the blessings of those, that particular, particular tree, is like the baraka, the blessing of the Muslim. And that tree was referring to the, the date palm. But here within the same hadith, we see that the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the Muslim is blessed. So every Muslim is blessed, he's Mubarak. He's blessed, but that varies from person to person. And that goes back to his actions, his Iman, and his Taqwa. However, every Muslim is blessed, but that varies. Naam. But these blessings and everything that we've mentioned so far are blessings which Allah has placed but they themselves are these things that we mentioned then they are يعني, means means to which or from which a person acquires blessings of so those places and those times so Mecca for example a blessed place the Kaaba and that which is around the Kaaba then there is a blessed place but these things in and of themselves so the Kaaba and the Masjid and the Ma of Zamzam the well of Zamzam and so on these things the person who attends the Masjid and does that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that which being in that place necessitates then he brings about the blessings of Allah upon himself so these things are means which bring about the blessings but not that these things bless in and of themselves that they give blessings and they hold blessings in and of themselves coming back to this second category now we have within this second category a specific group of people who are blessed even in themselves, يعني, in that that which emanates from them, even touching them, brings about blessings. And that is referring to the prophets, the anbiya. And this is specific to them. Nobody else. The prophets of Allah. They were blessed fi ajsamihim, in their bodies. And that which emanated from their, from their bodies. They were Blessed. Baraka dhatiya. A baraka which goes back to themselves and to their bodies. Naam. And so as Sheikh Salah al-Sheikh, he mentioned that their people, if any of their people sought to be blessed by their bodies, then that was permissible. And it was permissible for the Sahaba. So at tamassuh bihim to, to touch them. And that which would 
emanate from them, then يعني, that would bring about blessings. Naam, and this is something which is clearly established in authentic ahadith, in the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim, many ahadith in how the Sahaba would seek blessings from the saliva of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as we took in the hadith, wherein the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that I will indeed give the flag to a man who will bring about victory. He gave that flag to Ali. However, why wasn't Ali present? Because he had an ailment in his eye. And then he ordered that he be brought. And thereafter, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he spat uh, into his eyes or yani, he, he took his saliva and he uh, yani, rubbed the eyes of, the messenger, of, of, of Ali radiallahu anhu and he became cured immediately. He became cured immediately. Likewise, um, the, 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 um, the phlegm of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hair, when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he uh, performed the hajj, um, or the Umrah and he had shaved his head and half of his hair he gave to Abu Talha and the other half he again distributed amongst the Sahaba and again that which is clearly established in the Sahihain and other than the Sahihain that the Sahaba iqtatalu, they would fight over his what? the wudu water they would fight, fight over that wudu water and they would take it and they would, they would wipe it over their bodies and so on. Likewise, his sweat. All of this is established. But this is something specific to the Anbiya. And this has to be understood because in this matter, the people have gone astray. Or as they say, two extremes from them, those who may be hearing of this for the first time person who has come to know of Tawheed and he hears of this and he hears of the Sahaba or narrations that the Sahaba would do this and they think this is shirk this is shirk no this is something that is clearly established and the messenger of Allah Sallallahu himself would distribute his hair to them Naam and so the people in this regard are either on the two extremes, uh, yani as opposed to those who take the middle path, so the extreme of those who reject the likes of this, or the other extreme, those who then take this and apply it to other than the Anbiya. So those who apply it to al ulama to the scholars, or to the Salihin, to Imams and so on, those who take that, the likes of these evidences and they apply it to other than the, uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The biggest proof that this is specific To The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is what? The Sahaba Never did it with Abu Bakr Or with Umar Or with Uthman Or with Ali The best of this Ummah It is yani It has come with tawatur qat'i yani It is Beyond doubt it has come in a way which is like consensus that the Sahaba did not go to Abu Bakr and seek these things from him. They never went to Amr. They never went to Uthman or Ali. Naam. So this is something that is clearly specific to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and the Anbiya before him and the Prophets of Allah before him. And so this is uh, an important matter for us to understand um, when it comes to this fear of tabarruk and that which yani, we hope that we could uh, lay down as a foundation uh, before uh, reading further so this breaks down for us inshallah ta'ala this affair of tabarruk and something from its meaning naam uh, thereafter to continue reading after this after the title the Imam, he begins with وَقَوْلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى أَفَرَأَيْتُمُ اللَّاتَ وَالْعُزَّةِ وَمَنَاتِ الثَّالِثَةِ الْأُخْرَى The saying of Allah the Most High, have you then considered Allat 
and Al Uzza. Alat, Al Uzza, and likewise Manat, all of these are idols that the Mushrikeen of Quraysh and Mecca and other than Mecca would worship. And Manat, the other third. Naam. Naam. So here we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within this verse mentioning these three idols that the Arabs in that region, the region of Mecca, would worship. Naam. The Mushrikeen, along with their Iman in the Rububiyyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they believed in the Lordship of Allah. Along with this, they would commit shirk with Allah in his Uluhiyyah. So whenever they would put on the Ihram, what's the Ihram? Hmm? What's the ihram? When performing Umrah and Hajj, the pilgrims they put on the ihram. That is, the two, the two pieces of cloth, the white pieces of cloth. So the mushrikeen, whenever they would perform Umrah and Hajj, they would enter the state of ihram and they would say, they would say, La baik, Allahumma. Labbaik. Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. They would say, like, just like the Muslims we say. When they would enter into the state of ihram and put on the ihram. And likewise, when performing the tawaf, they would say, Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik la sharika lak. Illa sharikun huwa lak. So they would say, Labbaik, O oh Allah. Uh, I am at your service. Allahumma labbaik. Oh Allah, we are at your service. Or I am at your service. La sharika lak. You have no partner. Illa sharikun huwa lak. Except for a partner that you have. That, that partner that you've taken. Tamlikuhu wa ma malak. A partner that you possess or you own. But... He or that, that, that partner doesn't own anything. So look how they would begin their talbiya with tawheed. They would begin with tawheed. But then they would make this statement except for a partner that you've taken. Except for a partner that you've taken. Naam. And so they themselves they had remnants from the religion of Ibrahim salam. Hence why they perform the Umrah and the Hajj. And they would make the Tawaf around the, the Kaaba. Naam. After the building of the Kaaba by Ibrahim salam and Ismail, Ismail salam, he was blessed with many children. And there came within Mecca yani many, many people. And yani after generations had passed, the people continued to be upon the religion of Ibrahim. Salam. However, with the passing of time and with the spread of ignorance, there came those who, or there came a time wherein many of those who came to the house of Allah, they wouldn't leave except that they would take some of the stones that were around the Kaaba and in the Haram area, they would take a stone along with them due to them believing it is blessed, which it is, meaning the Kaaba and the surrounding area. But from their love of the house of Allah, 
they would take stones from around the Kaaba and take it with them to their place of residence, wherever that may be, and then they would make tawaf around that stone. Along with the fact that they still performed the Hajj and the Umrah around the Kaaba, but this was something that had entered into uh, the, yani, the people of Mecca. <laughs> Naam. Until they came, until they came, an individual by the name of Amr ibn Luhay al khuzai who was from the tribe of, of, of uh, al khuzaa an Arab tribe from that region. Naam. And he or his mother was, her name was Fuhaira. Fuhaira bint Amr ibn al Harith. Okay, so this Amr ibn al Hay al Khuzai, his mother, her name was Fuhaira bint, al bint Amr ibn al Harith. So her father's name is? Huh? Fuhair is her name. What's her father's name? Amr. Her grandfather's name is? Harith. Al Harith. Al Harith was the one who was in charge of the Kaaba at the time. Al Harith. So Al Harith to Amr ibn al Luhay is who? His? Naam? Naam. So his mother's grandfather. Naam? His mother's grandfather. Wadih? Is that clear? So Amr, he contended against him, Al Harith, in the wilaya over Mecca and over the Kaaba. And he was successful. He, over, yani he overpowered him and he then became in charge of the Kaaba. He then became severely ill. Amr ibn al and then it was said to him that there is a humma, a spring in al Bulqa, which is in Sham, a place in Sham. And they said to him that if you were to go there and bathe yourself within this spring, a hot spring, um, you'll become healed. So he went. And he was, he was healed after ba bathing in this spring. He was healed of this marad, this sickness that had afflicted him. Whilst he was there, he saw that the people of Sham and that region, that they would worship idols. And he became amazed by that and asked them to give him from the idols. And so they gave to him Hubal. They gave to him an idol, Hubal, that they named Hubal. And he returned back to Mecca and he entered Hubal, this idol, into the Kaaba. So he was the first one who changed the religion of Ibrahim. He was the first one to change the religion of Ibrahim and the first one to enter idols into Mecca around the Kaaba. It was in Jawful Kaaba. He entered it into the, yani inside the Kaaba. Hubal. Naam. And this Hubal was, along with these other idols that we, we heard in the saying of Allah here in Surah Al-Najm, أَفَرَأَيْتُمُ اللَّاتَ وَالْعُزَّةَ وَمَنَاتِ They likewise were from the greatest of their idols to them. But likewise Hubal. Hubal. Hubal, as is mentioned, that it is the first idol that was placed by the Kaaba. Uh, at the time of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and before the conquest of Mecca, there were a number of idols around the Kaaba. Anyone know how many? Now, 360 idols. So they say that they worshipped an idol each day. There was an idol that they worshipped each day. So from these 360 idols, they would worship each day one of them. Hubal, they worshipped for two days. Because he was from the greatest of their idols, Hubal. And Hubal is the, God, the, the idol 
that Abu Sufyan was referring to when during the Battle of Uhud, as we know, the first jawla, the first round, the Muslims had the upper hand. But there was a second round, and that is after the archers had left their position. Naam, the archers had left their position. And so the mushrikeen, they saw that and they attacked. And yani, we could say that the second round, that they were victorious. And the Muslims, they suffered a great defeat. 70 of the Sahaba were killed. Naam, martyred. At this point, Abu Sufyan, he said, U'lu Hubal. He said, U'lu Hubal. Yani, uh, may Hubal be, 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 be high, like the most high. Naam. And so, the messenger of Allah, وسلم, he said, Allahu A'la wa Ajal. Allahu A'la wa Ajal. Naam, he, he told, the messenger of Allah told him to say it. Uh, the, the, the Umar he responded with because at the beginning the messenger of Allah told them to remain quiet and not to respond to him not to respond to him when he said uh, uh, يعني, um, is there from amongst you Ibn Abi Qahafa يعني, Abu Bakr is there, from, is there amongst the people Umar and each time the messenger of Allah told him to not respond Naam until, until um, he said that, يعني, uh, that today is our day. For you was Badr and today is our day. That's when Omar couldn't resist and he spoke. He said, no, it is not the same because Abu Sufyan he said, Sawa and Bisawa. Now we're equal. You had Badr, we had Uhud. That's when Omar could not, يعني, restrain himself anymore but all along the messenger of Allah he said do not respond so the messenger of Allah he would say it he said it amongst the sahaba يعني, when he said أعلى حبل, he said Allahu a'la Allah is higher greater in highness and greater in magnificence Naam. until as we said until Abu Sufyan made this statement that now we're equal Amr could not hold himself back anymore and then he said it is not the same your dead are in the fire and our dead are in Jannah Naam. point being is we see here that Abu Sufyan he mentioned Hubal Hubal Naam. so this was from the uh, the greatest of the idols to them Naam. and he is the one that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said that he saw Amr ibn Luhay in the fire dragging his intestines dragging his intestines he said that he he is the first who freed the animals yani for the sake of the idols certain animals they would release and let go hmm? Like mercy to the animals for the sake of the idols. He was the first one. Naam. Because he was the first who brought the idols into, into, into Mecca and around the Kaaba. Naam. So that is uh, how idol worship entered uh, into the Masjid, Masjid al-Haram and around the Kaaba. Thereafter, uh, the there, yeah, and there came the other idols that the Arabs from Mecca and the surrounding areas from, from the various tribes that they entered into the religion of Ibrahim and, and entered uh, around the Kaaba to the point that there came 360 idols. Well, they, they had 360 idols. From the, from, again, from the greatest of them to them were these Three, Lat, Al Uzza, and Manat, and in fact, it is mentioned that when they would make tawaf, they would say this. They would say, similar to what you hear in the, what, you, what you hear in this ayah, they would say, Alat, Wal Uzza, Wa Manat Al Thalitha Al They would say this when they would make the tawaf. 
Naam, that has been narrated in the books of Tariq, in the books of history. This is what they would say. They would make this statement. Naam. Naam. As for the meanings of these names, then because the mushrikeen, they held that Allah, ta'ala, he had daughters. That he had daughters. And within these same verses, or يعني, that which follows after this verse, أَفَرَأَيْتُمُ اللَّاتَ وَالْعُزَّةَ وَمَنَاتَ الثَّالَثَةَ الْأُخْرَى نعم ألكم نعم ألكم الذكر وله الأنثى تلك إذا قسمة ضيزة إن هي إلا أسماء سميتموها أنتم وأباؤكم ما أنزل الله بها من سلطان look how they would that Allah تبارك وتعالى he responds saying to them to the mushrikeen of Quraysh alakum al-dhakr do you have, take for yourselves boys and you desire males something that they would يعني, uh, be proud of and seek يعني, they would prefer having boys and males over girls something they would detest to the point that they would bury them alive as we know they would bury their, their newborn girls alive but then they would ascribe to Allah females and, and daughters. Naam. And so here we understand the naming of these idols as it relates to Allah. This is the, the Mu'annaf, the feminine form of Allah to them. Allah, yani the Mu'annaf of Allah. Al Uzza, the Mu'annaf, the feminine form of Al Aziz. And Manat, the feminine form of Al Mannan. The name of Allah, Al Mannan. Naam. And so here, Al Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Ubaz, um, he says that where Allah Taala Allah, he says, Afara'aitum, within this verse, Afara'aitum al Lat wal Uzza, have you then considered? Sheikh says, meaning, هل نفعت هذه الأصنام أم ضرت? Have these idols benefited in any way or harmed? And the meaning here is that they haven't. And this is what is understood from Allah or the the um, the uh, the eloquence of the Arabic language here. That uh, as it relates to the Quran in particular, here they say that the Hamza of Istifam here, the yani, the way in Allah Taala He has posed this as a question. Although it is a question, the meaning of it is that they haven't, they haven't brought about any benefit, nor have they harmed. Naam. and they would ask these gods of theirs. They would seek blessings from them and they would seek deliverance, deliverance from them. Al Uzza was for the people of Mecca and those surrounding Mecca and those who followed the people of Mecca. Manat was for the people of Medina and Allat was for the people of Taif. For the people of Taif. Nam. And whosoever followed the people of Taif. Nam. As we're going to see uh, from the tribe of uh, uh, Thaqif and other than them. Naam. Naam. And so this is the first evidence that the Imam he brought uh, under this chapter. Thereafter, he brings hadith. And these are the only two evidences that he brings under this chapter. And that hadith is the hadith from Abi Waqid Al-Layth. Abi Waqid Al-Layth. Radhi Allahu Anhu Qal. That he said, Kharajna ma'a Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila hunayn. He said that we went out with Allah's messenger 
صلى الله عليه وسلم تحنين نعم نعم ونحن حدثاء أحد بكفر and we had recently left disbelief نعم the conquest of Mecca the conquest of Mecca the Fath of Mecca which year was this in? Does anybody know? 10th? 8th? Mm -hmm. I think someone else said 8th. Said, said 8th over there as well. Naam? 8th, 8th of Hijrah. Naam. It was the 8th of Hijrah. The 8th year after Hijrah. Naam. The 8th year after the Hijrah. The Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he conquered Mecca with 10,000 from the Sahaba who came from Medina. In the eighth year, in which month? Which month? I'll give you a clue, you're waiting for this month to come. Ramadan. Naam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to reach Ramadan. Naam. In the month of Ramadan, eighth year, after the Hijrah in the month of Ramadan. What is the month that follows after Ramadan? Shawwal. It was in Shawwal that they went out to Hunayn. It was in Shawwal that they went out to Hunayn. So you can see immediately after, almost immediately after, they went out to Hunayn. And that is because after conquering Mecca, two major tribes of Thaqif and Hawazin, they then feared yani this, this Muslim problem. Because now, look, they've conquered Mecca. So they gathered in large numbers, in large numbers, to attack the Messenger of Allah and the Muslims in Mecca. However, the Prophet he decided to go to them first. And so, they set out to Hunayn. Immediately after. 12,000 men. So we said they entered into Mecca and there were 10,000. Now they le were leaving to Hunayn to meet the tribes of Hawazin and Thaqif. Two major tribes. And now they went out with 12,000 which shows that there were 2,000 from Mecca now that joined. That joined the Muslimin, 2,000 who would now become from the Muslim at Fath, as they say. Yani those who accepted Islam after the conquest of Mecca. Uh, after the, con the conquest of Mecca, after the Messenger of Allah وسلم, entered Mecca now, they were those who surrendered and became Muslim. So, 2,000 of them now joined and they went out to Hunayn. So when Abu Waqid, um, he, he, Naam. He and his name is Al Harith. His name was Al Harith. This is his kunya. Al Harith ibn Auf. That was his name. But he was known as Abu Waqid. He said that we were Hudatha Ahdin bi Kufr. We had recently left disbelief. He was from those who accepted Islam after the Fath of Mecca. He was from those new Muslims. Naam. And so here he's informing us of what's to come. That this is relevant to what you're going to hear and what occurred. In that, this occurred from those who were new to Islam. They were new to Islam. And we see here the, 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 an idea of the number of those who came out and they were new. And look how new. They entered Mecca in Ramadan. They went out. Shawal, 2,000 who were new. So he was from them. Abu Waqid. Now, he, cont he continues and he says, وَلِلْمُشْرِكِينَ سِدْرَةَ يَعْقُفُونَ عِنْدَهَا وَيُنُوطُونَ بِهَا أَسْلِحَتُهُمْ يُقَالَ لَهَا ذَاتُ أَنْوَاطَ ذَاتُ أَنْوَاطَ The mushrikeen had a low tree, sidra. 
يعقفون عندها يعقفون يعني from that word that we know اعتقاف يعقفون يعني that they would confine themselves to they had a low tree that they would confine themselves to and they would hang their weapons upon it was referred to or this tree was called that and what that and what he continues and he says فَمَرَّرْنَا بِسِدْرَةِ and so we passed by a lot tree we the Muslims we passed by a lot tree فَقُلْنَا and so we said يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ O Messenger of Allah اِجْعَلْ لَنَا ذَاتَ أَنْوَاطِ كَمَا لَهُمْ ذَاتُ أَنْوَاطِ we said O Messenger of Allah make for us a ذَاتَ أَنْوَاطِ just as they have a ذَاتَ أَنْوَاطِ the Mushrikeen just as they have that tree then make for us a similar tree a tree which they would hang, that they would confine themselves to, and and this is the relevance behind bringing this hadith into this chapter. They would seek what from it? Blessings. They would seek blessings for it, blessings uh, for their weapons. That their weapons would be blessed, and their weapons would be, yani, weapons that would be, um, yani, strong and last during the battles. Naam, and not break and so on, and bring them victory. So this is what the mushrikeen they had for themselves. And so here, those who were with the Messenger of Allah وسلم, they asked the Messenger of Allah وسلم, that he makes for them a similar tree. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وسلم, اللَّهُ أَكْبَرْ He said, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. إِنَّهُ sunan. These, indeed, these are the ways. You have just said, by him in whose hand is my soul, كما قالت بنو إسرائيل لموسى. Just as the children of Israel of Israel said to Musa. نعم. And then he recited the Messenger of Allah, صلى الله عليه وسلم. He recited the saying of Allah. اجعل لنا إلها كما كما لهم آلهة قال إنكم قوم تجهلون make for us a god and this is from the saying of Allah سبحانه وتعالى in سورة سورة الأعراف make for us a god the بني إسرائيل they said to Musa make for us a god as they have gods قال so Musa he said to them إنكم قوم تجهلون Verily, you are a people who know not and who are ignorant. And then the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, he said, You shall indeed follow the ways of those who came before you. Naam. And so, this is the only hadith that the Imam he brings under this chapter. And uh, here we see that within this hadith, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he recited the verse in which something similar happened to the Bani Israel. And the completion of that ayah is the saying of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Wa jawazna bi Bani Israel al bahr and we يعني, uh, caused the children of Israel to pass through the sea. يعني, when Allah Taala parted for them the sea, and so they were able to escape from Fir'aun and his army. So Allah parted for them the sea, and uh, He allowed He allowed them to cross the sea. And يعني, witness a, a, a major sign from the signs of Allah. Naam. فَأَتَوْا عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ يَعْقُفُونَ عَلَىٰ أَصْنَامِهِمْ This is the completion of the verse. And so they came, the children of Israel, they came upon a people who يَعْقُفُونَ Again, the same verb. They would confine themselves. They came across a people who confined themselves to their idols. نعم قالوا يا موسى 
they said, O Musa, ij'al lana ilahan kama lahum aliha. Until the rest, end of the, of, of the verse. They said, O Musa, make for us a, a, a God just as they have aliha, just as they have gods. قَالْ إِنَّكُمْ قَوْمٌ تَجَهَلُونَ and Musa alayhi salam, he responded to them saying, Indeed, you are people who are ignorant and know not. Naam. And so here we see that this was something that the nations before us, they fell into. And the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he referred to this verse in that the same thing the same thing happened to the people of Musa alayhi salam. And this is after Allah had split for them the sea and um, granted them uh, victory over Fir'aun and his army and يعني, allowed them to escape. And after they had seen these tremendous signs from Allah, the Asa, the Asa of Musa alayhi salam, his staff and how he, by the will of Allah, had split the sea for them and how then Allah drowned Fir'aun and his army and returned the sea back to its origin and yani drowning Fir'aun after seeing this they then in their yani, uh, uh, their pursuit or the command that was given to them to then go to Philistine to go to Philistine because remember that uh, the Bani Israel they came from the descendants of Yaqub. Now, Yaqub who was the son of Ishaq. From Yaqub came the 12 sons, his 12 sons. Yaqub, he was Israel. He was Israel and so from Yaqub, his 12 sons and from his 12 sons came the tribes the 12 tri tribes of Israel and uh, after Yusuf alayhi salam after he was uh, thrown into the well and then taken um, as a captive or as a servant eventually uh, within the palace of the Aziz in Misr and Thereafter, entering the prison and then out of the prison until he became uh, yani, uh, a minister in the lands. And as you know, at the end of the story, he ordered that Yaqub, his father and his mother and his brothers, they all come to Misr. And so there, yani the Bani Israel, they settled there in Misr. Then came Fir'aun later. And he, he put the children of Israel through trial. Killed many of their, uh, their boys. Until they escaped the parting of the sea. They crossed, heading back to Philistine. On their way to Philistine, this is when they saw these people. It is said, if you go back to the books of Tafsir, that... Yani they were the Qan'aniyin. The Qan'aniyin. Yani Qan'an is the oldest son of Ham. Ham being the son of Nuh. Salam. So Qan'an ibn, ibn Ham ibn Nuh. And Qan'an was the first one to change the religion of Nuh. Salam. Qan'an. He was the first one. And thereafter Qan'an. <coughs> he then settled in Sham in the region of Palestine and uh, thereafter um, came many people from him and the Qan'aniyin whenever there would be a king from them they would name him Jalut so that ja then came Jalut that Dawood fought and killed Dawood alayhi salam and he was the, the last of their kings he was the last of their kings they would have certain names and we covered this before each people would have a name for their for their leaders. Um, so the people of Misr, uh, their their leaders, they would refer to them as Fir'aun. The people of Habasha, 
would refer to their leaders and their kings as Najashi. Uh, the people of Yemen would refer to their kings as cover this Tubba. Tubba. Naam. The people of Qan'an would refer to their to their kings as Jalut. Naam. So it is mentioned that when they the children of Israel they came upon these people, the Qan'aniyin, those remnants of those who remained from the Qan'aniyin and were situated there in that region by Palestine. And they saw them worship idols, idols that were in the form of cows, Baqar. And that remained as a shubha to them. And so they said to Musa, what did they say? Make for us. Huh? A god, like they have gods. They saw these idols, these cows, and yani, it, it put a doubt within their, their, their minds. And it stayed with them until Samiri. A Samiri, he came. And when Musa السلام, was in the Miqati Rabbi, when Allah had a point, yani, um, uh, called Musa السلام, to that appointed place, Naam, um, and then a Samari was responsible for creating for them again this ajal, this calf that was made of gold. And so, yani, that is the qissa of the, of, of, of the, of the calf. Naam. And, naam. And, naam. This took place whilst Harun al -Islam, was still with them. This took place whilst Harun was still with them and in their presence. And the scholars, they mentioned that, that just as Bani Israel, they said this to Musa and it took place whilst Harun and Musa was still alive, but Musa um, at the appointed place that Allah had summoned him to. But Harun, alive there, present with them, then similarly, the, this Ummah, just as the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, he stated within this hadith, that you shall, in, you, should, you shall indeed, you shall indeed follow the ways of those who came before, that this occurred even in his lifetime, yani, uh, within the Sahaba. That within the Sahaba, that there were those present with him, those who, of course, were new to Islam. And that was the reason why uh, this statement emanated from the Sahaba. Yani the Hudatha Ahad, the Kufr. Those who had recently left uh, Kufr, recently left disbelief. And so the Aqeedah of Tawheed had, had still not, yani it, it hadn't yet taken a firm uh, place and they were yet to learn. And as uh, the scholars, they mentioned, or they mentioned that uh, the, um, this hadith itself, it shows to us how there are those who, after they leave falsehood and they leave whatever falsehood they, are, they were upon, that there could remain that which is from falsehood and habits, يعني, that which they used to be upon previously. And so here we see this. And يعني, soon as the Messenger of Allah, he uh, conquered uh, Mecca, then um, the tribe of Thaqif, or from the tribe of Thaqif, there came a waft, I will end with this, there came a delegation from the uh, tribe of Thaqif. They came to, uh, to profess their Islam. They came to Mecca, came to the Messenger of Allah to profess their Islam, to become Muslim. However, they placed a condition upon the Messenger of Allah they said that we will become Muslim. However, 
they, they requested that or the messenger of Allah وسلم, he requested from them before taking the pledge from them the messenger of Allah وسلم, pledged from the people of Thaqif that they destroy a lot this idol that they would worship they refused so the messenger of Allah وسلم, withdrew his hand and he refused to take a pledge with them now then they agreed but they said to him and they requested from him that they that he he gives them a month he gives them a month yani to allow them to continue and the people of thaqif in particular the women the ignorant ones the foolish ones and the children because this would uh, put them to trial this god that they are so attached to that this would put them to trial so they requested a month yeah, I need to ease them in. Give us a month and then we'll destroy that. <laughs> and so the messenger of Allah, وسلم, he said, after they said, give us a month, he said, Wala sa'a wahida. He said, not a single hour. Not a single hour. Um, and this here, the scholars, they, sh they say that, therefore, what we take from this is uh, any person who is in charge of the affairs of the Muslims and has the sultan and the authority and the power then it is not allowed for them to allow the actions of shirk to continue even for a single moment or a single hour now and so the messenger of Allah, of Allah SWT, he sent uh, Mughir ibn Shu'ba he sent him to destroy uh, Allah he sent Khalid ibn Walid to destroy al Uzza. He sent Ali bin Abi Talib to destroy Manat. And Al Mughira, when he came to uh, Thaqif and he came to destroy uh, Al Lat, uh, they were watching, expecting uh, this idol, Lat, to protect itself and to see what would happen to Al Mughira see what would happen to him and so he struck a lot with a pickaxe but it came back and bounced him in the back of his head and so they began to laugh they laughed at him they laughed at him what again so al mughira he took the pickaxe to destroy this idol of theirs a lot but the pickaxe yeah, and he bounced back and hit him in the head, back of his head. So they laughed. So then he took it again and destroyed it completely. And it's just coincidence. Now, um, and so, um, yeah, and we see here, um, and this is one of the benefits that we'll take from the matters that we take from, uh, or the important matters and benefits that we take from this uh, particular chapter. Which we'll cover inshallah next week because there are 20 benefits 20 benefits too many to cover now but 20 benefits that the imam he brings but this being from amongst them um, and that is why umar ibn khattab radiallahu anhu the khalifa during his khilafa when the people had now entered into islam in flocks they began to ask about the shajara of ridwan bay'at ridwan that tree under which those sahaba they pledged the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance twice. That they would aid from the, from the Aws and the Khazraj, from the people of Yathrib at the time, who then became the Ansar, the people of Medina. When they gave the pledge twice, the Bayat Ridwan under that tree, when the people, they entered into Islam, those who were weak, those who were new, they knew the father, the virtue of that Bayat, and those who gave that pledge, they began to ask about this tree. And so he feared that they would now go to extreme with this tree, seek blessings from this tree. So he ordered with the chopping of that tree and it was chopped. Naam. As we said, we'll continue with the important matters in the next class. Naam.